His Majesty is on time. I know that, you fool. It must be made to work. Get it back. Oh, not me. The timing fuse is all wrong. It has to be all done again. teapot as I send a signal. As long as I send the radio signal, the electromagnetic relay is activated. When I stop sending the signal, the magnetic field is broken. Come. See that, Phipps? Can I stop now? No, 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 no. Keep pedaling. We need the power. Now I switch to the frequency which will activate the cream. Oh, oh yes. Mustn't forget the cream. Now I'll move the cup. Now the lemon. Cream and lemon. <laughs> oh, that wasn't very neat, was it? That will need a small amount of fine tuning. Move the cup. Now, the sugar. Please, God, let me one lump. My legs are giving up on me. Oh, no, not again. That will need some adjustment, but you see the principle, don't you, Phipps? Principle. That human labor can be replaced by mechanical labor. All I can see is it took your brains and my strength to make one blooming awful cup of tea. I am not making tea. I am making scientific history. You know the trouble with you? You have the natural arrogance of the literal-minded pragmatist. Oh, yes, well, I must have got that on my mother's side. All I got on my father's side was a strong back and a weak mind. I'll go and make some tea the proper way. You mean the old, wasteful, time-consuming, human-consuming, profligate way of your ancestors? Yes. The way my old mum used to make it. Professor? Hmm? What? Do you think I could borrow Phipps in the car this afternoon? What for? Well, I That thought... idiotic soup kitchen in London again. Someone has to care about the poor. Waste of time. It fills their stomachs and gives them some comfort. So does gin. Never mind. I shall bicycle to the station and take the train. No, 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 Phipps, you take her. But I tell you now, the problem with the poor is not their hunger, but their ignorance. Yes. I think ignorance is always part of the problem. to the logs of us. Oh, very welcome, madam. Madam, he says, and he gives us dishwater and stale bread, and him a bleeding lord. They resent us, really. Educated, kindly people, giving up our time to do soup kitchen work. They think we're condescending. And perhaps we are. 
easing our own consciences. Don't be ridiculous, Sydney. What you're doing is important and good. I can afford to support 20 soup kitchens, but that is not enough. Not I, Mr. Phipps. Good afternoon to you, Governor. And who do you think you are, Grandma? Oliver Twist, go on. No second help, it's up it. Oh, you stuck up. Here, I remember you when you was a dirty little oh, boy. Stop your moaning, you old <laughs> bag of bones. <laughs> we really don't speak their language, do we? I wish they could take their destinies into their own hands and change their lives. How can we help them do that, I wonder? There must be something we can do, something really big, something really important. Yes, I expect I sound to you like a bored man with too much money trying to justify his existence on this earth. Mm -hmm. Bit of a dreamer, perhaps? You don't. Not a bit. I'd like you to come down and meet Professor Deverell. He feels rather like you do, and he's worthwhile, very worthwhile. So I have a rival, do I? <laughs> Don't be silly. You are a fool. That'll be him. <clears throat> Lord Sarandon, Professor Deverell. How do you do? Lord Sarandon. Oh, please, call me Sydney. <laughs> Yeah, Jenny's been telling me that you've been working on some mechanical devices to duplicate human movements. Approximate human movements, without fatigue, without error. <clears throat> Precise control of a kind no human being could ever reach. Oh, well, that's very, very interesting. <laughs> I'd love to know more. Well, I'll give you a demonstration right now. Oh, how kind. You won't be requiring my services, will you, Governor? Who is he? Him? Oh! He's the hero what pays for this soup kitchen. Stout bread and all. Lord Sarandon. His dad made a fortune, bought himself a lordship. For himself and his little boy. Nobles obliges. Yeah. Vips! I knew it was too good to last. Do you take sugar? Oh, I know. Oh, that is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, to think that this thing here can control the actions of that over there. Do you have to be very close to make an electrical contact? Not necessarily. It depends on the uh, strength of the signal, the size of the object, the magnet, the distance it has to travel. Yeah, I see. If it could be put to some use, uh, practically, I mean, in industry, for instance. See, my father's an industrialist. My family owns quarries, and the conditions in them are, are terrible, really. Dreadful. And dangerous. Yes, I wish you could see. But perhaps it wouldn't really be much good. Why not? Sounds like a bad one. What are you talking about? Well, sir, uh, 
We have to blast out the stone using sticks of dynamite stuck in the cracks. Now, we use the usual fuse and detonators, but uh, sometimes they're faulty. This one sounds like a racer, as we call it. Today, we was using a short fuse. Why? Where's the first aid box? Well, sir, when we're blasting, everyone stops work, and uh, the boss doesn't like that, so we use a short fuse. It's quicker. Anyway, with uh, weather conditions like this, I mean, a long fuse could play any sort of trick, sir. It's appalling that human beings can be treated this way. I've tried. What are you doing about it? You say it's your family business. I have tried, but my father treats me like an office boy. Well, he won't treat me like an office boy. To start with, I can detonate the dynamite from hundreds of feet away, from where the quarrymen can work in complete safety. No damned faulty fuses. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I don't say things I'm not sure of. Come on. How can anyone explode a bomb at several hundred feet without a fuse, without a clockwork timer? What devil has invented this machine that works by remote control? Now, from several hundred feet away, you can send a signal, unheard and quite invisible, that could trigger off a bomb. Are you quite sure? Devil swears it. Devil is a genius. I salute you, comrade. Comrade, victory is within our glass. <laughs> Driver, Mr. Phipps, before? Yes, Dolly. Oh, well, now you're a real gentleman's gentleman. Oh, 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 a little bit more than that, I should hope. You mean you're a butler, too? I think you would say, I keep an eye on things as a valued associate of the company. Well, I never did. I never heard anything like it before, Mr. Phipps. I think you're safe to say it is a unique position in the history of domestic service. Oh, my lord. Couldn't put Ed on that, could you? Of course. Oh. And, uh, more tripe? Oh, if there's any more going, my compliments to the cook. Oh, you couldn't see that the onions are just that little bit more crispier, could you? There's lovely. What I am suggesting, Lord Eastley, is that you make some improvements in your quarrel, which will, A, Increase the safety and the productivity of the people you have. B, decrease the unit cost of what you produce. C, increase the speed with which the work is done. And D, reduce the need for workers whose tasks are repetitive and can be done by machine. Hold your horses. Can we deal with letter A before we proceed with the entire alphabet? A, increase the productivity of the people you presently employ. And how are you going to achieve this uh, miracle? What I'm proposing is this. Install machinery to replace the men whose jobs are... Install machinery? You mean purchase machinery? Is that what he means? Yes, Father. But I thought he was here to help us get more out of the money we already have in this wretched place. You have to modernize. Spend money? Well, yes, at first. And has it been properly tested, tried out on the job? No, it hasn't. You see, it's my own invention. I thought it might be. I'm a self-made man, and I'm proud of it. And I've got to where I am, to live where I live, by the sweat of my brow. And that's the way I expect my workers to live. And if you think you're going to get me to throw away my money on your invention, you've come to the wrong shop. What I have come to explain is that by the use of simple, cheap, scientific methods, you can benefit your workers and yourself. Make yourself richer. Look, Professor, whatever your name is, you're not the first long-haired wizard who's been brought along by my son to shove some half-baked scheme down my throat. If you are too pig-headed and uh, self-satisfied to face this simple fact of 20th century life, my time is valuable, and I don't propose to waste any more of it here. <laughs> Professor, let's apologize most sincerely for my father's appalling behavior. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I shouldn't have lost my temper. I should have tested the thing first. I'm ready to give him a demonstration. Perhaps we can think of some other way of persuading him. Of giving him a demonstration of the invention. I can. I think I can. Jenny, that uh, Greenwich conference. Here. Yes. Here. From uh, Mr. Winston S. Churchill. The International Conference on Industrial Progress. They invited me to speak. A bunch of bigwigs are going to be there. Morgan, Carnegie, some big bankers and industrialists from Europe. Awful. I hate those things. I turned them down. But you mustn't turn this one down. It's a great opportunity. That's exactly right. I'll give them the speech I gave your father. Only this time I'll be ready with a demonstration. I can't believe it. Deverell will actually be demonstrating his machine to the most evil men in the world. The leaders of privilege and capitalism. Yes. With the help of our unknowing genius, you and I, comrade, are going to set off such an explosion that it will shake the whole world. Yeah, what about, uh, what about Deverell? Oh, but that is up to you. You are his friend, his persuader. Ah, he's an intelligent man. I'm not sure I could ever persuade him. And persuade? My dear Sir Andon, the word persuasion means only one thing to us. Force. Obviously, we will use the girl. Jenny, you mean Jenny? Uh, we take her, hide her, threaten to kill her. He is very fond of her, needs her, usual thing. Uh, we will get his cooperation soon enough. It always works. No, 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 this is impossible. I insist you leave Jenny out of this. This girl is just a pawn in our game. She will not be harmed. Forget your bourgeois inhibitions. You must have strength. The strength of a great conviction. And now you have the chance to show your strength, your courage. Do not throw away all we have won. Hello, Professor Deverell's residence. Oh, Sydney, hello. Oh, it's a bit difficult. The professor's gone to Cambridge and he's left me. Ah, if you're desperately short, of course. A soup kitchen evening. Yes, Phipps. In the car. No, don't worry. With the professor away. It would have been his wish, if not his command. Thank you, Phipps. I'll put this in the pantry. You to come. It's all closed up. What's going on? I didn't know the young lady would bring a champion. It's very good. <laughs> Nor did I. Damn the brute. But why? It is perfect. Now Devereaux will believe every word you tell him. Nice, be 
involved. Never believe a lord who won't use his title. Just call me a sedan. How could Jenny and Phipps be kidnapped and you escape? Well, that is what happened. East End is full of thieves and, and gangs. One of them chose to attack us outside the soup kitchen. Sure, sure. But uh, how was it that they were kidnapped and not his lordship here? Well, how should I know? I was knocked unconscious at the time. They stole my watch and all my money. I would have thought you'd be thrilled. It makes a lovely story for the press. You were supposed to look after Jenny, you spineless, useless, you tea drinker. Easy now. Lord Tarendon has taken a lot of punishment. Oh, yeah, sure, a black eye and a few scrapes. Ah, uh, Charlie would have died for her. You'll have another black eye in a minute. Thank you for patching me up, Professor. Gotta get a hold of the police. No police. No contact Scotland Yard. Just wait instructions or the lady and the man will be eliminated. Well, if it's money they want. No, somehow I don't think it will be money. I'm not just going to sit here. I'm late. I'm coming with you. You will not. You'll endanger Jenny's life. Don't you talk to me about Jenny. I could keep out of sight. Follow him. Professor, he really must not interfere. It's too dangerous. Lord Tarendon's right, Charlie. The instructions were clear. We can't take the chance. What am I to do? You stay right here. I may need you later. Stiff upper lip, old boy. Operator, would you get me prospect 5935, please? The fish is swimming in our net. Professor Deverin, are you the man I am to meet? Yes. Are you armed? No, I am not. Well, I am. Come, let us stroll together like good comrades. And then you understand, a bomb which can be triggered by your remote control device. How are you going to use this bomb? To advance human liberty, Professor. By taking human lives, no doubt. Innocent people. I destroy the old so the new can be born. A new, just world. <laughs> I know about injustice. You see, I was sent to prison in my own country, accused of theft by my employers. If I had been rich and well-connected, I assure you, I would not have spent a day in prison. Not a day. I spent four years. Just as well. Prison became my university. You didn't say whether you were guilty or not. You have missed my point. It was the system that was guilty 
It is a system that I am going to destroy. What are you going to destroy? I demand to know. A symbol. Nothing more. The young lady and your servant are in my power. And they are not symbols, are they? They are flesh and blood. Yes, of course. Your device and the bomb must be ready by tomorrow. Tomorrow, but I... Tomorrow, yes. And you will place it where instructed. They made a demand that only I can meet. It's my burden. The less you know about it, better. Now I have work to do. I need privacy. Oh, of course. Sure, Professor. You know what's best for Jenny and Phipps, I'm sure. And I'll be close by if you need me. Why don't you go back to your castle? Did you get the number of the cab? How did you? Yes, I did. And now I'm going to track down the cab driver. Maybe I'll find out something, maybe I won't. But I'm sorry, Professor, I've got to try. Charlie. Be careful. still in London. in the house worth having, except the professor. Or one of his inventions. The tea maker. That's it, miss. You've got it. That's what they're after. Some bloke wants to open up a chain of tea shops. And that invention's going to make his fortune. I'm George Nantes, co-owner and general manager of Trend Toyota. Drop by and let our friendly staff show you the fantastic lineup of fine Toyota products.
You're going to kill them, aren't you? Jenny, please, not Jenny! You wouldn't want the young lady talking to the police about you? Then. But you said she needn't be hurt. You're like a child. You hear only what you want to hear. And Deborah? You would die in the explosion, of course. Can you imagine the headlines the next morning? International leaders die in bombing. American professor responsible. I've shown you how the generator operates and how the signal is sent. That's quite simple. But this is not so simple. It can be jarred and set off. Don't play with those controls. There is a residual electrical charge in the transmitter, and it might be enough to prematurely set off the bomb. Where is the bomb to be placed? Would you first, please? Put it in this case. That's mine. Where did you get that? Please. Do as I say. I thought the dimensions you gave me were a little too exact. I don't know much about electrical relays or transmitters, but I have made bombs before, Professor. I may just walk away with it and throw it in the river. And abandon your friends? I think you are a man filled with bourgeois sentiments of loyalty. But... In any case, I will give you a companion. You know Comrade Sarandon, of course. He will accompany you to your final destination. A conference? The observatory? Yes, filled with the oppressors. No. You're insane. I refuse to do this. You don't understand, Professor. The option is not yours. Refuse, and your friends will die quite horribly. You will, of course, be killed here, now, on the spot. Your death will be useless. One way or another, that bomb will be planted in the conference hall. Make your choice. Now. I have no choice, have I? No. Good. A wise man knows when he is defeated. I want the bomb placed before 12 noon when he is scheduled to speak. Then slip out. I will blow the bomb at precisely noon, Greenwich Mean Time. We will meet here immediately after the explosion. Goodbye. Come, let us stroll together like good comrades. It must have been quite a surprise, my being part of all this. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, come to think of it. Yeah, I do remember him. He was a funny geezer with a beard. Foreign. Oh, they all look the same to me. Where did you take him? Why? Friend of yours, then, is he? Yes. Uh, yes, he's a, a friend. Then you'd know his name, then, wouldn't you? Boris. Boris Gudinov, uh, that's, uh, that, that's his name, my, my friend. Where did you take him? Well, uh, if he's a friend of yours, I think you ought to know where he lives. Look, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm Charles Andrews, special reporter with the International Wireless Telegraph Dispatch Service. This uh, Boris Gudinov is a uh, special story I'm working on. Oh. oh, I see. Well, it sounds interesting. I'd like to hear a bit more. Ah, yours, when you take me where you took Boris. <laughs> no, you don't understand. This is revolutionary war. You see, Kalnikov says... Kalnikov! 
Is that his name? Well, it doesn't matter. Do you trust him? Of course I trust him. He's my comrade. Comrade? Amazing. Poor Lord Saladin. What a mess you're in. Running away from your horrible father out of the frying pan into the fire. Kalinkoff's become your Svengali. He's got you mesmerized like a rabbit with a snake. Shut up! You talk too much, just like a schoolmaster. Do you really think he's going to let either of us walk out of this place alive? This is a vital part of today's demonstration. Shall we sit? Cabby called Phipps. Phipps? Yeah, of course I did. He went off his nut, sold his cab to a yank. Begging your pardon, Governor. You brought him here? Yeah, to the very door, sir. Listen. I have reason to believe that your friend Phipps is being held here in this house against his will. A young lady with him. What? Now, if I go in there, will you call the police? <sighs> Poor old Phipsy. Yeah, yeah, of course I will, sir. There's, uh, just one little matter seems to have escaped your memory. Oh, yeah. Also here for a uh, Professor Deverell. at the observatory. Oh, no! God, blow me. We've got to stop him. They're going to blow him up. What? But we are going to wait till Comrade Sarandon comes out, aren't we? No, we are not. I am going to designate at exactly five minutes before the hour. Any criticism of my decision? Good. Start generating the power. That seems a good place. 
place for it, Lord Saren, don't you think? When will Kalnikov set off the bar? Noon, I bet. He's got an orderly mind for a lunatic. Wanna see it? That's the detonator. All Kalnikov has to do is press the button on the transmitter. The bomb will destroy everyone in the front row, maim and blind the rest. You and I, don't worry, we should feel very little. You know what Kalnikov is doing right now? He's got one of your comrades on the generator bike. Kalnikov is checking the voltmeter to make sure he has sufficient power. More power! for you to leave, you know that. He's going to send the signal now. control box. When Kalnikov had enough power, he triggered the transmitter. And the transmitted signal triggered the bomb. In the same box? Yes. A dramatic demonstration of remote control. The distance wasn't very great, but the principle was demonstrated. I don't know why you're all having so much trouble understanding this. Winston Churchill got it right away. And he's a politician. Well, Governor, how about a nice pot of tea? Yes, Phipps, that would be nice. I, uh, don't have to use the old finger me cheeks, do I? No, do it your way. The old, wasteful, time-consuming, profligate way of your ancestors. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> 